YouTube. Shout out King King Nazru. And as you can tell, we've uh I got a new uh recording location. Uh doing it from my kitchen. Uh just uh to change things up a bit. And so anyway, I'm here with a review of Dragon Ball Z Kai, episode one hundred and twenty eight. So um as we last left off, um uh, Majin Buu is now free from Bobby's control and thus wreaking havoc of his own accord. Uh a bit that he thinks is all a gang to him, so he's not doing it all e evil like like Cell or Frieza. But he yeah, has later on Majin Buu proves he can be evil in his own way. I love Majin Buu. He's my favorite villain out of all of them. Uh, and, uh, meanwhile, Goku is teaching the fusion technique. And we cut to the present. And Majin Buu is suddenly feeling exhausted. And, uh, he decides that he wants to build a house. Unfortunately, there's a human settlement there. And so he quickly gets rid of it. Uh, right after this guy offends him by saying he doesn't look cool. <laughs> uh, it's a little thing that really screw us over. And then Majibu takes it up a notch by not killing the entire population, but by turning them into clay and making it into a house. That is dark. That is Dark and comedic, dark comedy. I love it. <laughs> Bravo, Majin Buu. Bravo. And then he proceeds to go about the daily lives of, you know, uh, eating, uh, doing bathroom hygiene, even giving a little PSA of uh, always remember to brush your teeth. Uh, and then he goes to sleep. For about five seconds, and then he's fully, fully energized. He has more energy than a rat does, and uh, he decides to occupy his time uh, by destroying more things since he was he's supposed to wait two days for Goku and Trunks to fight him. And speaking of Goku and Trunks, uh, Goku teaches continues to teach him the fusion technique, but they can't seem to get the steps down. As Gus and Trunks being weary of trying to go through it over and over again, needs some convincing. And they ask Goku to, instead of teaching them the fusion technique, which looks kind of stupid, to teach them how to turn to a Super Saiyan 3, uh, which they think will give them enough to uh, defeat Majin Buu. However, Goku says to the otherwise, uh, you, you won't, unless you learn the fusion technique, you're not going to be able to defeat Buu. But he eventually gives in and agrees to turn to Super Saiyan 3 in exchange for, um, for them learning the fuse technique. And he does so. Unfortunately, he's not able to stay in that form for long, as he, before he did it, he had 15 minutes left, which was based upon his energy level. But now he's so weak, he can't even maintain Super Saiyan 3, and his time was cut up to almost to practically being immediately time for him to return to the afterlife. And everybody gathers around uh, and says their farewells. Uh, it was really touching. I, uh, I almost got bursted into tears just seeing that. Because got mad respect for Goku. Uh, Chi Chi arrives and she asks Goku what is she going to do now that he and Gohan are dead. Well, Goku's dead, but Go we all know Gohan's not dead. But he says that uh, you still have Goten, and he'll look, take care of you. And I'll say, uh, say hi to Gohan. And then everybody, then Videl tells her that she has a hunch that Gohan's not dead. And, but, uh, Krillin says that it's probably unlikely since they could, if he was still alive, they would be able to sense his key. And then they all bid Goku farewell as he turns to the afterlife. And as Goku, uh, before Goku enters the afterlife, he tells, uh, 
Piccolo that he needs to, that he needs to take up on training Goten and Trunks how to do a fusion technique. And then he proceeds to the afterlife, where it is crowd dead. Uh, it makes New it makes how traffic in New York City look like a suburban area in Georgia. Yeah, it's, it's that, that crowded. And Goku goes to King uh, Emma and asks him, ask him, has he seen Gohan? And to which King Emma says, uh, no, he has not seen Gohan. Which Goku deduces that if he if King Gamma didn't see him, that must conclude that Gohan is alive. And uh, we also get this little nice tidbit to see what happened to Deborah. Uh, he was acting up uh, when he was about to be judged, but uh, since he's the king of the demons and probably would have liked hell, he was sent to heaven. Hey, whatever works. And uh, Goku's all ecstatic that Gohan's still alive. And he suddenly senses that uh, Gohan's key is around. But he doesn't know, what, he can't pinpoint it exactly. <coughs> Actually, he could, but he just didn't know where it was coming from. So he just set, uses his senses and uses instant transmission to teleport to where Gohan is. And we see cut off with Gohan trading with the Z sword. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no. nice episode. Uh, it was all still a little bit of small things, but the real heart of the story uh, was Goku um, going back to the afterlife and passing the torch to Gohan. I mean, Goku and Trunks, as they are now the only ones who have a chance of defending the Earth. And I really enjoyed that. It was really heartfelt and very warming. So, yeah. It's all coming together and making so many of the reasons why I love the Boo saga uh, out of all the sagas in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. <sighs> so that was uh, episode 128. And next episode, I mean next video, we got another, another thing to talk about Dragon Ball Z. Something very, very special. <laughs>